Good morning, everybody. It's Steve with Real Progressives. We're going to talk about the word neoliberalism. It is a term that everyone should truly understand, not just throw around, because it's a word that has a lot of important meaning. And it's a word that if we as progressives don't understand it, we certainly won't be able to fight back against it. Neoliberalism is an extreme form of uh, free market capitalism that pushes what would be public services into the private sector. So when you see a candidate for office talking about creating markets, or you see them talking about privatizing uh, some services because they feel like the private sector might be able to handle it better, that is neoliberalism. When you see them doing artificial uh, dividing lines where, well, you know, up to this point, means testing, right? Uh, families that make less than 110000 a year will give free college to, okay? Back in the 70s, when we had the OPEC scare, and we had, you know, inflation going through the roof, and we had, you know, gas lines, for those of you old enough to remember this, many of us would sit there with our parents in the car, maybe you were the parent, um, we'd sit there in these long lines, odd, even days, uh, for who could get gas. It was very, very horrific. I mean, sometimes these gas lines were like a mile long. And for people that were living that, it was it was a pretty scary existence. It was a pretty brutal existence. There was a lot of that whole end of times thing, peak oil, all kinds of stuff. People were freaking out. So naturally, the idea of inflation kicked in. And so the right-wing neoliberal scourge known as Milton Friedman pushed us into the situation where we would go ahead and borrow money during bad times and then we would pay the debt back in boom times. They would eliminate the public space. In other words, they would eliminate federal government spending and they would make that the boogeyman. They would talk about any time the federal government spent, you know, that's going to cause inflation. What are you going to do, just print more money? You know, this thing that horrible people say today is what was said then and has been used to great precision to keep people stuck and fearful of what the government could do. So neoliberalism pushes public space to private space. It takes away the public good and turns it into a for-profit entity, okay, so that few prosper while the many suffer but pay their money to pay for that service now. Do you understand what I'm saying? So when Hillary Clinton would go around talking about how, you know, she'd be open to privatizing Social Security. That's a neoliberal. That is like as neoliberal as you get. And it's not just because she's a Democrat or some other thing. Neoliberalism is about willingness to push markets, to push market solutions versus the federal government stepping in and handling the public space for the good of the people. Now, I want you to understand why this is so important. And forgive me for the cars. I'm, it's a nice day, so I'm sitting on my front porch and, and live streaming. But when you understand, when you understand that the lies that they've told to keep us believing that we can't do nice things, they have permeated everywhere. They've permeated the Green Party to such a point where they think they've got to end the Federal Reserve. They've got to do this. They got to... Why do they think that? Because they don't know any better, quite frankly. Okay? But they, did, they replaced the fear of one thing with the fear of another. It's always got to be something to fear instead of knowledge, which eliminates fear. Okay? So you look at global corporations, and neoliberalism has gone into these new countries and new places, and America exports neoliberalism like you wouldn't believe. We export our exceptional neoliberal ways, which is capitalism, yes, but it's a different flavor of capitalism. It's kind of like the mixture of corporation and state. It's corporatism, largely, okay? And what you see is the corporations are seeking markets, the government creates situation that creates new markets. Corporations lick their lips. They create new markets. All of a sudden, they win. Think about the medical marijuana industry and some of the bills that came out at the state level. They made it monopolistic. They gave it to certain large corporations. 
Philip Morris and people like that are sitting there waiting in the wings, chomping at the bit, hoping that they can get their fangs sucked into this thing that millions of black men, poor kids, people that were hard on their luck, went to jail for. Marijuana. Think about this. These people are going to sit there and capitalize on that after millions of people were cut out of the American dream with being put in jail for simple things like marijuana possession. Neoliberalism, folks, pushes out these things to ensure that corporations win, that markets are there, and that we are then in turn forced to go to those markets. Think about the ACA for just a minute. The one thing that we got out of that was getting rid of pre-existing conditions. But what it did was it forced us to a private market solution one more time. You understand that this, once again, was the epitome of neoliberalism. When you start hearing Hillary talk about free college, but it's only up to 110,000 or whatever, that's neoliberalism. When you means test things, this is another form of neoliberalism because it's like, okay, we're going to go ahead. We're going to go ahead and help you little people, kind of, not really. But we're going to keep fattening up the wallets of the wealthy and, and the corporations by forcing you still to do it in the private sector. Now, what is the difference between the public sector and private sector? The public sector has no means, and yet it never runs out of means. Why is that? Because it creates the currency. So it doesn't have to turn a profit. It can do it right. We could spend and spend and spend, and it really doesn't matter. The idea is you want it to be the best it can be. Not the most profitable it can be, but the best it can be. And so we keep cutting and reducing spending to make these public sector uh, programs useless. We keep cutting and cutting and cutting to ensure that they look worthless. And then it, it always happens. It always happens. Somebody raises their hand and says, hey, guess what? I think that the pub private sector can do this better than the public sector. And then all of a sudden they say, yeah, yeah, we can do that. And they start cutting that program out and pushing it. Somebody comes up with a great idea. Hey, we can do it this way. And it happens over and over again. Now, I see the Democratic Party largely still acting like that. The Republican Party has always acted like that. The Libertarians are exactly like that. That is Libertarianism. The only thing they want the government there for is to clear their markets. They want to make sure that capitalism goes full bore, just full bloom. And I'm telling you right now, neoliberalism is what's causing all of our pain and suffering. Because they make it so that there's a need for you to suffer, so that there's a capitalist, so there's a neoliberal, so there's a corporatist way of addressing your problem. This is why there's so much pushback against Medicare for All, which is still largely a neoliberal plan. It's better than the rest. But it's still neoliberal. It's still pushing you to private sector stuff. Now, mind you, it's single payer, so it's being paid for by the federal government. But a real, honest-to-God public service, a national health service, without George Gill. This guy has no idea what he's talking about. George, anytime you want to debate, let's go head-to-head, -head, buddy. Me and you, baby. I swear I'd love to have you on, t but on camera. I want people to see your face, okay? I want them to see your face. And when your face is sitting there and you can't answer the questions because you think you know something, this guy knows has no idea what he's talking about, let's go for it, man, anytime, anytime you want. So let's get back to the story. The bottom line is, is that Medicare for all, how are you going to pay for it? With keystrokes. The government is the currency issuer. The government is the currency issuer. And there is no issue whatsoever with us being able to afford whatever we need. 
And the problem is, is that they create these markets to force us into them. And that, my friends, is neoliberalism in a nutshell. They keep the money scarce to make you beg, which makes the corporations be able to hire you on the cheap. It is a vicious circle, and they do it to drive the economy. That's how they think you drive the economy, by creating artificial scarcity, by making your life suck just a little bit more so you have to go and spend the money. And this is neoliberalism. This is the cycle, and this is how it works. It's more important you'll ever know that we fight back against neoliberalism. It is incredibly important that we fight back against neoliberalism. And this is why a federal job guarantee is so important. Because a federal job guarantee literally takes away the fear of destitution from the neoliberals. They can't use that anymore to keep you out of work. They can no longer use that to keep you and your family struggling. A living wage with living benefits and the ability to make choices not out of desperation. How many choices have you had to make that were like with a bullet to your head, a gun to your head? Because if you don't make this choice now, you're going to lose your home. You're going to lose your car. Your family is not going to eat. You're not going to be able to pay your electric bill. You made a really, really bad choice. You went to a payday lender. You did whatever. Why is that? Because the federal government intentionally reduced spending to keep us desperate. To keep us desperate. And I'm telling you right now, Molly Maybray, the government shouldn't control anything. Hey, Molly, that's too damn bad. Why don't you go away? We are the government. We are the government. And it's time that you realize that we are the government. And that's the problem, is because we aren't the government, because worthless people have allowed the government to be taken over in this way. And no, basic income is absolutely not the answer. Let me tell you something. The Koch brothers, neoliberalism lives for the basic income. They're desperate. Milton Friedman back in the day said, hey, the only problem with capitalism is we need more capitalism. We need more money going to the people so they can spend, spend, spend. But the fact of the matter is the basic income is nothing more than a school voucher. They give you this money and what happens? Nothing changes. Why is that? Because there's no price anchor. There's no wage anchor. There's nothing it's pegged to. There's no productivity coming out of it. And what it does is that then the Koch brothers who desperately want a UBI with you, the Koch brothers are your friends when you say that. They love you, man. The right wing is desperate for you to do that because they want to get rid of the social safety net. They want to eliminate it. And guess what? There is no way you will get a big enough basic income to take over all the things that the federal government has done. And so what they'll do is, hey, it's like reparations. If we were to give reparations for slavery, think about this for a minute. Do you think it's just a money issue? No, it's an equality issue. It's an equity issue. But what they do, here, let me give you $1,000. Now shut up and go on. Why aren't you doing well? Why aren't you succeeding? You got your $1,000 income. Now go shut up and make some money. Go shut up and go do your thing. Go shut up. That's what it is. That's your basic income. It's nothing but a neoliberal Trojan horse to destroy the social safety net and destroy the public purpose. It's time people smarten up. Because neoliberalism has got its hooks in you. And basic income is the perfect neoliberal ploy. Neoliberalism, a basic needs guarantee is one thing. You want to give me free shelter? Knock yourself out. You want to give me free clothing? Good. You want to give me free food? Knock yourself out. But when you give a basic income, there's nothing to prevent prices from rising. But in a job guarantee, a federal job guarantee, hey, guess what? Production's meeting it now. So now they can't just jack up prices because a federal job guarantee goes with it. And so now they can no longer cut you out and screw you up. Imagine if $1,000 didn't pay for what you needed it to pay for. It is truly inflationary. So, hey, I got $1,000. Aren't I happy? Well, what does it buy you? There is no wage. There is no price anchor to that. There is no nothing. It is exactly what they are desperate for because it opens new markets. And now what do you do? There's nothing to prevent you from going to payday lenders. There's nothing to prevent you from doing any of that stuff. 
It's neoliberal on steroids. But yet, here we have well-meaning people running around saying, let's have a basic income. This is how pervasive neoliberalism is. It's worthless. But neoliberalism is in your sitcoms. Every sitcom you watch, Roseanne, that dumb, oh, she sat there and mouth up, yeah, the only problem with socialism is eventually run out of other people's money. Well, what happens when the money is created by the federal government, the government's unit of account? The U.S. dollar, just like Japan's unit of account, is the yen. Just like Australia's unit of account is the Australian dollar. Just like the U.K.'s unit of account is the pound sterling. Grow up, Peter Pan, Count Chocula. Come on. This is the stuff right here that neoliberalism has really, really sucked its fangs in and injected its venom, and we perpetuate its bullshit telling you right now we better smarten up or it's going to eat us for lunch dinner and spit us out for breakfast it already has it already has I'm telling you right now my friends neoliberalism is the devil it is absolutely the thing that we have got to go after and start it just crush it's the enemy Think about this. A kid with autism. Do you think a kid with autism should be pushed to private sector solutions for a profit margin? Ask yourself that. Is that who you are as a human being? Is that who you represent? Is that what values you have? Are you that guy that would push an autistic kid to a private sector solution so that they could pay through the nose and, oh, I'm sorry, we can't give you services, young man. Ah! I can't give you services, young man, because you know what? You don't have enough money. Sorry. My son needs way more services than we'll ever get with neoliberal piles of crap that don't know any better. Oh, my God. We got some anarchists and folks in here that don't even understand economics, that just have things to say. It's incredibly important that we teach them or we move on past them because I'm telling you right now, our existence depends on knowing how the system works and not being dummies and letting people die while they sit there and play games. I'm not joking. It's that serious. Anyway. I'm Steve Grumbine with Real Progressives. Have a good day, everybody.